Hello, now I'm going to talk about um, application architectures. And the main idea about uh, these application architectures is uh, uh, so when we talk about uh, architectural patterns, we define applications that are define application independent solutions. So we can talk about the layered architectural uh, pattern. And this can occur in several types of uh, uh, applications. Here I'm talking more in terms of types of applications and usually when I, I when I talk about application architecture I talk, I, 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 I type, uh, talk about a, an application for a type of, of system and usually the way I can I describe this architecture is by putting together several of uh, several architectural patterns in order to implement this type of system. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to talk about three different types of system. The first one is transaction processing systems, where basically there are systems where you receive an input and you want to guarantee that this input, although occurs in uh, different uh, steps in different systems, it occurs transactionally. And so uh, the, the, you define a transactional context associated with, with, with the processing of the input. Okay, such that at the end everything uh, uh, is okay and is consistent. So when you basically uh, withdraw money from a ATM machine, you are you, you are starting one of these transaction processing systems that guarantee that uh, at the end you just uh, uh, receive your money or you don't uh, get the money because you don't have uh, 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 you don't have a balance to, 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 to get the money, okay? But, but basically is processing of an input and guarantee that uh, everything is okay with that processing. So transaction uh, processing systems are quite common in some type, uh, some type of applications and they are, they are used, okay? And also so, sometimes they include this uh, a little bit of a uh, pipelining. And then you have these uh, information systems that is almost everything. But uh, the idea of information systems is uh, the idea of a, re of a repository. Okay, you have data, so it's information systems are around data. But but then on top of this data, you define several layers that guarantee some qualities of the data, like for instance the quality of access to guarantee that uh, only who has the right to access the data or you have a, a, a layer that basically provides a, a, a nice query uh, engine so that you have fast access to data or, or that you can have an expressive description or you can, you can have uh, you can pr have expressive queries to, to obtain data or to process large amount of data. So information systems, it, it's uh, quite common and usually you can just talk about information systems in a very uh, wide uh, way, okay? Not, not very specific. But actually then, if you look at these, you will have uh, uh, several layers related with this processing with that, with some a layer where you have the, 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 the business logic, another layer where you, where you have the, um, the, the, the user interface, okay? And, 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 and the data will be persistent. So you, you use the, 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 the repository um, Architectural uh, pattern as well, and sometimes these are information systems are uh, distributed information systems, and then you use the client server again. But this idea of uh, you store the data or you assess the data and the, the data process it, it, it goes through several layers uh, in order to guarantee some qualities or provide some type of services on top of that data. And the last one is language processing systems. Okay, so there are systems, so this, uh, this um, application architecture is basically where you have a part of the system that deals with uh, parsing and uh, uh, doing anal a synthetic analysis and parsing uh, an expression. Okay, and then maybe they can just generate code and execute this code in a in, in, in a virtual machine, for instance. And it's interesting that this can be done in different ways. For instance, uh, the way you have a compiler, okay? So a compiler is basically a, a process language system, a probably a language processing system, probably one of the oldest, okay? And, uh, but you can use different patterns to, to, to achieve this, okay? For instance, you can use you can implement a compiler using the um, 
more traditional pipes and filters where you have this pipe where you do you receive the 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 the, the, the code and you you tokenize the code so you do you do basically um, lexical analysis then you do synthetic analysis and from the tokens you generate a, a synthetic tree and then you generate the code blah, 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 okay and this is one one way that uh, you process it is the more traditional way that uh, you implement this but you can have language processing systems like um, IntelliJ or Eclipse where actually you look at the code not as a pipeline so this is implemented not as a pipeline but implemented as a, as a repository the code is there and all your applications keep changing this code so you you, you open these with the with, with with your IDE with the with the Eclipse for instance and you just receive it and it and it processes the data and does highlighting so it does the it compiles the data it, it does synthetic analysis of the data and it does highlight and then you see it and when you change the, a little bit the code it just goes to the to this repository changes the code there recompiles what is necessary to recompile. It's not going to recompile everything because it's going to be too slow. It just recompiles this part and then integrates with the other parts. So it verifies what needs to actually be recompiled and provides the errors and still the errors here. So what's interesting here is that you see for the same application architecture with this language processing system, you are going to have uh, uh, parsing and uh, probably even execution of the generated code, you can have different architectural, use different architectural patterns to achieve different uh, results in terms of, uh, for instance, the interaction in this case, because the, 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 the pipes and filter is more uh, a batch-like uh, solution, while uh, the, the repository is more uh, like an in interactive uh, solution. So it's interesting to, to understand how you have these uh, application architectures that are well known and that so I'm going to develop this type of system I already know the type of components and the type of elements the type of modules and that I'm gonna need to have to support it but I can have combinations very interesting combinations so yes I have the parser but in one case the parser is a filter in another case the parser is a data accessor to the repository that just parses part of the code so it's the, the way you mix things and you, you, you build the design of uh, large applications. Okay, I hope you enjoy reading this. <laughs>